joining me here today, it's the one, the only, of course, talking to Jessica Evil Eye, set to fight at UFC 272 against a hot prospect in Manon Fioro. What's going on, Jessica? How are you? Is that how you say her name? I mean, to be fair, I'm French. So, I mean, you know, if you really, like, I set the bar for how you say it, and then everybody else can kind of just, you know, do their best <laughs> afterwards. Man, I could come across very disrespectful at times because I can't pronunciate things correctly, but that is not how I um, was saying her name. So thank you for at least letting me know that's how you say her name. Well, I mean, uh, I'm going to have to put you on the spot, but how, how do you say it? Don't. No, oh, wait, <laughs> Manon? Manon Fioriat? I see. That's 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 the American thing. You look at it the way it's spelled, but in in French, we like to put a bunch of letters and not say half of them. That's why it's super confusing for Americans. So help me say it again. How, so say it slow. So if you wanted to say it in English, you'd say like uh, Manon, Manon, and then Furo. Furo. Manon. Manon Furo. That'd be your best bet. But to be fair, you're gonna punch her in the face. So I mean, does it is it really that important that you know, say it correctly? No, not at all. I guess not. You know, out of respect for her, I was just trying to call her the, the right name before I go in there and beat her. <laughs> for sure. Uh, listen, we, we were talking a little bit off camera, but you have, uh, you know, your training camp and stuff like that. Uh, how's everything going so far? I know that's the boring question fighters hate, but how's everything going? Yeah, you know, it's the boring question, but what everyone wants to know. Um, you know, I've been very, very fortunate that, you know, everyone has seen my career at its highest of its high, and then we've had some low moments. And, you know, obviously working through losing my gallbladder and getting back into the octagon, making weight healthy and proper and, you know, going through my gut issues that, you know, I've been fortunate enough that I connected with a really amazing doctor here in Cleveland. Um, I came back to my hometown and I've been working with her. So really, I feel like the weight cut is the least of my worries. I just want to make sure I stay super healthy for the fight and, you know, excited for it. How does the gallbladder kind of affect everything? Because it's kind of confusing. You hear some people, they say they can't put on fat when they have it removed and stuff. It's super confusing. Obviously, I'm not a doctor, but how does that affect you as an athlete? Um, I guess the best way that I can explain it to you, right? And everybody's body's a little bit different. But to explain just for general terminology, your gallbladder is your first line of digestion. So as soon as you eat food, anything, food or take a drink of water, your gallbladder says, release the bile, release the bile and attack the food and allow the food to break down and be used as fuel and being used as fuel, as medicine, you know, whatever your body needs. If you're building muscle and you're eating lots of protein, you know, it helps break down the proteins and it gets it to the correct spot so it can fuel you. Well, mine, you know, stopped working for well over a year and I, I really wasn't sure what was going on. But once I finally was able to get a hold of it, the doctors basically were like, oh, just get rid of it. Take it out. You don't really need it. But that's not true. If I was born without a gallbladder, you know, we're all born with gallbladder, so we need them. It's not a matter of, yes, survival is capable of being done without having a gallbladder pre present, but it still means that I have to supplement and still change you know, my diet and work through things. So it's been a continuous journey, and you know, I, I'm very, very, very excited just going into the fight knowing that the weight cut isn't going to be an issue, but also knowing that I'll be fueled properly so I can have the correct game plan that I want to implement. So before we get to the fight and all that stuff, there's a question I think a lot of people really want to know the answer to, but uh, months ago, or it may even been years or something, you kind of broke the MMA Twitter when you announced that you're making an OnlyFans and taking requests and stuff. I have to know, what's the craziest over-the-top request you've had where you almost looked at it and you're like, oh, hell no. Nah. Oh, man. You know, um, the craziest one, man, I don't want to put people out there, you know, real bad because, you know, people have their own little quirks and their things. They, it's where they go, you know, to, to, to fill that. Um, but I think it's that the, the craziest one is when, when someone wants to see a video of me fainting. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Like, I do want to see me fainting. But, you know, it it's seems to be a, a crazy one. But, you know, my only fans is more than just, you know, people crazy requests. It's for the people, you know, who want to have a private meeting with me that has nothing to do with sexual or has to do with anything. It has to do with them talking to me and having a video message. Imagine going, you know, say, say Applebee's pays me for an appearance and they pay me X amount of dollars and they say, hey, we're going to give you it so this many people can come and see you. You know, OnlyFans just allows the platform for us to be able to conversate from me directly to a fan you know, about anything, about 
fighting, about life. It's it just anything. I think that's the thing too with OnlyFans is people they instantly think sex and like even guys like Kevin Holland who have one they were like that's not what I'm posting on there like if you guys went you'd see it's not that so I assume for you that's what people associate it with. Yeah, of course they do. I mean, you know, and and I I always say you know I challenge you to to pay my subscription fee and you know if you would like to talk to me or be my friend on a, on a higher level then yeah I'll gladly talk to you you know via the app. Um, but you know, social media has became so easy to just talk to people however you want to. You can demean them however you want to, and it's it's nice that OnlyFans creates that barrier where I can talk to fans who want to talk to me and not, you know, hurt my feelings or just say mean things on my social free social media. Well, I find myself too. going yeah. to my OnlyFans more often to talk to people because they're they're actually there because they want to support me. You know, sometimes people follow you on Instagram just to hate on you. Well, I assume that's the thing too. Like, if people are paying to have access to it, if you're paying really just to troll you for a month, that seems like a, a little. You kind of look like an idiot. Come on, that. my subscription is more than your Netflix. So come on, let's go. Come insult me if you want. You have to pay thirty dollars to do it. <laughs> yeah, that sounds. Yeah, not not a very smart move. Uh, let's talk about this fight a little bit. Obviously, you're taking on a hot prospect, big pay per view event, and everything. What was your reaction when your manager or whoever came to you and said, you know, this is the next person? Well, I wasn't really sure with who she was. I, I'd heard of the name, you know, from just the industry and, and knowing about the flyweights, but I didn't really know what her accolades or her fight schedule or her fight record was. So in that time, you know, I was still coming off of E. coli and being in the hospital in October, which is why the KGB fight got canceled. You know, I spent 10 days in the hospital or 10 days being extremely sick while well, five of those days were in the hospital. And then another two weeks on antibiotics from, you know, fighting E. coli and sepsis. So when that fight got canceled, you know, I was hoping I was going to get a, a couple months to get my health back in, back in order. And I did, I, I started to, um, and, you know, really started getting back into training. But when they approached me with this fight and this opportunity and, you know, it, there wasn't much to say about outside of like hey you know it's time to get back on a winning track against a good girl um and a good opponent on a good card so you know we said yes what's the pressure like heading into a fight like this obviously you know since she's the prospect she wants to make her name off somebody that's very famous you're obviously on a little bit of a streak you of course you want to you know kind of fix that what's that pressure like on you heading into 272 I really don't feel like there's much pressure. I feel like there's a lot more pressure on her, right? Like she's got to beat me. You know what I mean? Like I already know that I'm going to beat her. And I, I've, I've made that up thing before and for so many fights that I would always give myself away. I'm like, oh, if this happened, you know, like maybe this will happen in the fight and I'll be able to accept it. At this point, I no longer have that mentality. And I just, you know, I have to go in there and I have to take the fight to her and show her what it's like to have been, you know, a 25-time professional vet what, what was it that led to that shift in mentality did you have someone kind of tell you like hey maybe you should think differently or did you just realize yourself like you know this might not be the right approach um after you get 17 stitches in your third eye and your forehead you start you know readdressing things and you know that fight was a lot for me I, I i felt i won that fight i know it was close but i felt i won that and i felt that because of the cut it, it swayed the judges and swayed you know, the way that they judge that fight, but it definitely made me a stronger person and made me look to where, you know, I don't, I don't want to go 50, 50 with these girls anymore. I want to go in there and take the fight to them and, and get out as fast as I possibly can. And so we know for these cards, I mean, this, this is going to be what three cards in a row were on giant pay-per-views, right? Poirier McGregor, you're on both of those. Now there's a Masvidal Covington. What did you think of the buildup to Masvidal Covington? Cause these guys are getting real personal People are, you know, not too happy with their trash talk. For you as a fighter, what do you make of their whole buildup? Gosh, you know, again, I'm I'm the worst when I'm on fight cards with big people. I don't pay attention to them. <laughs> like, if you want to ask me about other stuff that, like, I've been paying attention to that has anything to do with everything except for my fight card because my fight card is only about me. Like, I don't stay for the other fights. Like, it's only about Jessica I. Like, as far as I'm concerned, I'm the only one fighting on UFC to see 272 for my own sake. I have to be focused on myself. So I haven't really been watching much. I mean, yeah, I'll see a little bit of Instagram stuff, but I haven't really been paying attention. 
I feel like the only thing that I paid attention to most is knowing that Donald Trump will probably be there. Oh. Uh, actually, actually, you're breaking some news for me because I, I haven't heard that. So I assume the arena is going to be pretty crazy if he is there. I'm, I'm imagining. He's a fan of both of them. Donald loves yeah. the fights. Like, I was just like, I guarantee you he's going to end up being there, you know, for those guys. So um, that was really the most that I've given it. Outside that, all my focus has really just been on me, you know, me creating my own empire, me staying connected with all of my fans that, you know, pay me on my only fans. And again, getting my gut health and getting my career back, you know, and it starts with this next fight, you know, it's starts with me getting back on the win column and taking the fight where I wanted to go. And so you mentioned that you're back in Cleveland. Is it fair to assume you're training with everyone's favorite UFC firefighter or is that, is that not the case for this camp? It is. I'm back at strong style, which has been my longtime team. Um, I went to Vegas to try some new things and just found that, you know, I, I miss those guys and I wanted to connect back with them, you know, and connect with them. And, you know, I'm still living in Las Vegas, but I'm training out here. So, I'm splitting my time right now. I don't think I'll ever move back to Ohio fully. You know, I, I'm definitely, maybe we can call me a snowbird. There, there was a card that's, uh, that's in Columbus, I believe, March 26th. Was there any talk on potentially getting you on there? It feels like an Ohio card would have made sense for Jessica I. Yeah, I would have loved that. I had no idea that there was an Ohio card until we were already halfway through this. And I was like, man. <laughs> So, well, hopefully, you know, she's able to get out of Canada and able, you know, to, to get out of, you know, I'm not, I know that there's been issues with some of the traveling. So if she can't, maybe they'll move us to, to Columbus, move that fight to Columbus. All right. So for you as a fighter, we know that the, the COVID stuff kind of, you know, people have to be careful because you could easily get pulled out of your fight, you know, like a day or two before. Are you and your team going to do anything special to, you know, maybe live in a bubble or something to avoid the fight falling out? Or is it just, you know, hope for, kind of hope for the best? You know, I, it's just hoping for the best and staying, you know, as, as on it as we possibly can when it comes to testing ourselves and being, you know, holding ourselves accountable. I think that really what we've learned most in COVID times is that if you're sick, stay home. You know, if you don't feel good, yeah. stay home. We've all worked through that too much that, you know, at, at this point, anybody in my camp, if you're not feeling good, stay home, relax, get get yourself together. So, um, no, you know, I mean, it'll be what it'll be. It's out of my control. You know, if I'm, you know, if I'm, if I'm going to get COVID, it's going to be out of my control anyways, you know? So I Fair can't enough. follow my coaches around or my training partners all the time. Like, unfortunately, we don't make that much money for me to, to occupy people from the time they wake up till the time they go to bed. Fair enough. Uh, getting back to this fight with Manuel, what, what kind of fight are you expecting out there? I'm sure you've watched tape. I don't know if you're one of those fighters that do, but what kind of fight are you expecting out there? Oh, I mean, she's, she's a good fighter. You know what I mean? Like she's got, she's a lefty, you know, she's got great kicks. Um, I've fought in girls like her before, so I can see a mix of styles that I have seen. Um, but I, I know that she wants to win, you know, and she wants to beat, you know, just guy, the vet on her way out, you know, like, you know, what she would assume. And, you know, like that's, that's not going to happen with me. And I, so I assume she's going to be coming. She's going to be coming. Correct. She's going to want to put show that she is somebody to be reckoned with, you know, in the division or someone that can contend with Valentina. Cause that's what everybody wants to do, you know, and they, they don't look at the fights in front of them. So for me, I expect her to come on her a game and um, I'm going to come in my a plus game. Does that add a little bit of extra fire for you? Like, you know, you're not about to, you know, use me as some kind of stepping stone. Like, is there extra little heat because of that sort of narrative? Yeah, yeah, of course. Like, I'd go out there and finish fights and just show people why I'm good, you know, and why that I've lived in my life as an open public book to, you know, in this fight career. I've had good days and I've had bad days. And, you know, I hope that everyone can accept my career and accept it like I do so that when I go back and I, I get to that world title that, you know, they can be like, man, that, that's what a true fighter is. That's what a true warrior is. They stuck to what they know and they never gave up on themselves and they always worked hard. Even when people put things in front of them to make them, you know, seem like they could fail. All right, one last question for you. It's an easy one. It's an obvious one. I'm sure you've heard it a million times. People have probably asked you on OnlyFans, but how do you see yourself getting your hand raised in this fight? Oh, man, I, I see it as a TKO finish. I do. I see me getting her on the ground and 
finishing her. And if it's not strikes while she's standing up, it strikes while she's on the ground. All right, well, we look forward to it. It's going to be a great fight. I don't have to tell you that. Thanks so much for the time, Jessica. I really appreciate it. Thank you, and thank you for telling me how to truly say her name. And uh, have a great day, and I appreciate you having me on.